इसी कहानी बिगेन्स सो ब्यूटिफुल इतनाइट Lord Vishnu tells Lakshmi Mata, "I think it is time. I want to show the world how beautiful our love is, how beautiful our marriage is, how beautiful the relationship goes." It is said, Lord Brahma, his consort is called. क्या बात? सरस्वती माता. The consort of Bhagwan Shiva is Parvati Maya, and the consort of our Lord Shri Vishnu. God as Lakshmi, Maya. I want to show the whole world. Let us descend to the earth. Let us have a grand wedding. While Lord Vishnu and Lakshmi Maya comes down to the earth, they've chosen a beautiful spot in Bharat Desh in India, and they're preparing for this beautiful wedding. All the gods of the heavens they've come down together. When we are having a grand event, we must learn to work together. We must learn to compromise. we must learn to work hand in hand because if we don't if sometimes emotions become too much if sometimes the ego of minus and the iness becomes too much then no one will be able to work together but with humility we can aspire and we will achieve goodness and greatness all the gods have come together lord vishnu has taken the opportunity bhagwan shankar has come down parvati mata It is said, Lord Brahma, Lord Indra, all the gods have come down to the earth, and they are preparing for this most beautiful wedding. And while they are preparing for the wedding, Lord Vishnu, he is about to now signal the beginning of that beautiful sanskar. And how will he signal the beginning? It is said, every yagya, every puja, every religious event, every religious occasion, it is signal by the sound of the shank. When you look at Lord Bhagwan Shri Vishnu, in one of his hands he's holding the shank. Bhagwan Shri Vishnu is ready now to blow that shank to now begin the sanskar, and as he is about to take up that shank, he realizes that he doesn't have the shank. So he starts to look about for it. I wonder where did I put it down? And while looking for it, he can't find the shank. Katha tells us he turns to Devi, "Hare Lakshmi Maya, did you see my shank anywhere?" Maya says, "No." That is your shank. You supposed to know where you put it down. Bhagwan Shri Vishnu, he becomes little agitated because this is what he holds all the time. This is what he will use to awaken the energies of the universe. And while looking for that shank, he can't find it. While he's looking and he cannot find it, he sits on for a moment. He closes his eyes and spiritually now he starts to search. He is the Lord of the entire cosmos. He starts to search. Where is the shank? Lord Vishnu does not know where the shank is. So while searching spiritually, all of a sudden he hears the sound of the shank. Are you getting it? <laughs> he hears the sound of the shank, and where is it coming from? When he closes his eyes and he now pictures that direction, it is coming from Kailash Parvat, the mountain of Bhagwan Shankar. He says, "Oh, so Bhagwan Shiva took my shank. He left Vaikunt and he started now to go to Kailash Parvat." And while he's going and he's climbing that parvat of Bhagwan Shankar, it is said he's thinking in his mind and he's hoping that as he will find his shank, everything will go according to plan. Do you know that when you plan too much, never nothing works out for you? When you plan too much, nothing works out. Everything turns upside down. And when you go at that last moment, then you see things working exactly as it is supposed to be. As Bhagwan wants it, so it shall. क्या बात? As Bhagwan wants it in his eyes, according to the best in his eyes, in his name, in his form, it will be as it is supposed to be. So then, don't fight in the world. Then don't argue in the world. Then don't quarrel in the world. Then simply show humility and allow his energy to take form. Bhagwan Vishnu is climbing up Kailash Parvat, and while he's climbing up, he's about to meet Bhagwan Shankar. As he sees Bhagwan Shiva seated on Kailash Parvat on the top of the mountain, he walks up to the Lord and he says, "Prabhu, I heard you blowing my shank. Do you have my shank, Lord?" And Bhagwan Shankar says, "Your shank? I don't have your shank." And then he heard it a second time. And when he heard it, he turned around and behind the Parvat, who is sitting there? As Bhagwan Vishnu walks up to Lord Shiva, he puts his hands together. Shiva Shankar. दया करो लॉर्ड बी कम्पाशन इट मी आई हैव लॉस माई शंक टू लॉर्ड गणेशा कैन यू प्लीज हेल्प मी ऑल प्रभु 
and Bhagwan Shiva opens his eyes and he says, Bhagwan Govinda, I cannot help you. You see, the strength of Lord Ganesh Baba is so much. I may be powerful, but he is strong in his own way. Every one of us, we are strong in our own way. Every one of us, we are unique in our own way. Never try to be like somebody else. There will only be one of us. Never try to imitate anybody. Never try to fool anyone. There will only be one of us. And if we can find and tap into our greatest nature, we will be the best person ever. When we try to be like somebody else, then later down the road, we will realize that we are not fooling people, but we are fooling our own selves, our own nature. And gradually, we will become bored of life in itself. Explore your own nature, as it is called the Swabhav, our inner being and our inner form. While Lord Ganesha sits there, Bhagwan Shiva tells to Lord Vishnu, the only way you can get back your shank is if you walk back to Lord Ganesha and you calm him down. How do you calm Lord Ganesha? You worship him. You see, Lord Ganesha is the remover of all obstacles. No matter what problem you have in the world, calm him down and he will protect you. Simple. How to calm him down? Worship him. How do you worship him? With your hands together, with all respect, look into his eyes, look into his form, look at his beautiful form, my friends. And with the hands, heart, jodhika, together, then you sing with the most beautiful love that could come from your heart. What does Lord Vishnu do? Lord Vishnu walks up to him and he kneels down and he puts his hands together and he starts to pray. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. And while he's praying, Lord Ganesha is about to blow the shank another time and then he sees the Lord kneeling down before him. You see, if even Lord Vishnu, who is the sustainer of the whole universe, could kneel down and pray before this child, Lord Ganesha, who are we to claim that we are too big, we can't pray to this God and that God? Some people believe we come to the temple of lies enough. I done here already. I go get a blessing. A humble person puts their hands together. No matter who you are, no matter what you have, what you don't have, Humble devotees will put their hands together and stand before the Murti. From tonight, my dear friends, we are given a beautiful opportunity as our Lord is made out of the earth of the Mother, Parvati Mata. Everybody take that opportunity and every night walk up to the Lord. Don't just come and sit at the back and when it's finished, you just leave. This is a golden opportunity that will never come back. Many people have come and they will simply just glance the eyes, walk up to the Lord, touch His feet, take your head and touch it at His feet. And get darshan. Lord Vishnu is the Lord Almighty. And he knelt down, put his hands together. Om Gam Ganapataye Namo Nama. Shri Siddhi Vinayaka Namo Nama. Kya wala? Ganapati. I remember doing puja for one mother one day. And I remember from the beginning of the puja till the end of the puja, while the katha was going on, while I was giving a message, while I was saying my mantras, for the whole puja, our hands were like this. Do you remember the older folks would do that? Do you remember the elder people, they sit down to do prayers and their hands are like this? Because that is the respect that we have to God. That is the respect that we have for the deities that are here before us with all the energy and their hands are together. Or when time to continue the puja, they will take the offerings and they will put it, but the hands will come back like this because that is the respect we must have for God. When you sit before the Murtis, don't just fold the arms like this. Ego speaks. Don't just prop the chin. Ego speaks. But as a humble devotee, hands together. Do that tonight, my dear friends, because it shows your humility. A man of ego might say, yeah, man. Baba, they ride it. No problem, man. Yeah. <laughs> Heart, jor, kar, hands together, my friends. With a simple form of respect, miracles can take place for us. When we respect our Lord in turn, He will show us the energies to respect ourselves. And if we are respected, if we respect ourselves, the world will respect us for who we are and what we're about. While you sit before God's and the energies of God, think about it. Bhagwan sits here and we are simply, yeah, Baba. Humility and respect. Lord Vishnu put his hands together and he took his head and he touched it at the feet. He could have said, I am Lord Vishnu. I am the control of the cosmos. Give me my shank right now. When you stand to fight, you may lose. 
But when you stand with humility, you will always win. A humble man will always be a successful person. It is said, as he puts his hands together, Lord Ganesha, he holds out the shank. He says, Prabhu, maaf kije, that I take it from you. I just saw it lying there and I picked it up. But if this is yours, Prabhu, this is yours. Take it. And the Lord held it there and he gives a message to Lord Ganesha. Lord Ganesha, as I bless you today for giving me the shank, I'm about to begin a beautiful sanskar. And I want to invite you to my sanskar. I'm about to get married, Prabhu. Lord Ganesha, I'm going to get married and I must invite you to this beautiful wedding. And Lord Ganesha, he takes the invitation. And while Lord Vishnu is about to leave, he explains the importance of the shank. Do you know that if in a puja, a yagya, a satsang, if when worship to God, the shank is not heard, it is said that puja is not completed, the yajna is not completed. If the shank is not heard at the most grandest of events in the sanskars, it is not completed. Lord Vishnu says beautifully, he says, Prabhu, there are two types of shank. There's the right-sided shank, and there's the left-sided shank. You all ever seen the two types of shank? How many people have ever seen the two-sided shank? What is the importance of the two sides of the shank? You see, the left-sided shank is the shank in which every, every pundit, sadhu will blow. This is the left-sided shank. Well, <laughs> your right, my left. The left-sided shank. It is said the pundits will blow the left-sided shank to invite the gods of the heavens to come down. And while they will blow the shank, the left-sided shank, Bhagwan Shri Vishnu says, I reside in this one. So when you blow the shank, I will come down and bring all the gods to bless the Yajna. However, while I will reside in the left-sided shank, my Devi will reside in the right-sided shank. See the difference? As Lord Vishnu will reside in the left-sided shank, left, it is said, Devi Mata will reside in the right side. The right side must not be blown by anyone, but it must be used for worship. If you are giving bath to the gods and you were to fill this with the Panchamrit, with the Ganga Jal, and you give bath with the right sided shank, it is said the blessings are manifold. The blessings are countless. Bhagavan Shri Vishnu, when he speaks, he says, and when you're blowing the left-sided shank, a woman is not supposed to put her mouth on that. Remember, I am Lord Vishnu. I reside in the left-sided. And if a woman takes Lord Vishnu and puts her on his lips, and Lakshmi Mata find out, Hare Bhagwan, <laughs> Jai Narayan, all heaven break loose. Woman must not blow that shank. Because Lakshmi Mata will become upset. And while the right side will be used, Lord Vishnu, he says, that while doing worship to the right side, Lakshmi Mata will bless her house. Do you know the importance that this is said? It is said according to the Brahma Vaivarta Puran, according to Pulasya Samhita, according to Lakshmi Samhita, according to Gauraksha Samhita, and according to Bhagavad Gita, it is said to those who will use this Right-sided shank, the blessings will be so much. Every home should have one like this, Lord Vishnu says. For when you have a right-sided shank, to those who are living in that home, you will ward off the effects of the planets, grahas, planets, that will bring about problems. It is said while having this simply in your home, you will remove untimely deaths. You will gain long life and everybody of that home. You will weaken your enemies. You will dispel disease and poverty. You will bring knowledge towards that home. Bhagwan Shri Vishnu says to those who will keep the shank in your home and in turn use it for worship, the prosperity that comes is so much. It is said an abundance of wealth is attracted to the home. It is said if you're having arguments, fights, quarrels, tension, with the blessing of Goddess Lakshmi, you will dispel all of that. But mind you, if you have the shank in your home, Lakshmi Mata is there. 
You must worship her. You can't just put daughter sit down there and say, well, ma, bring money, man. You bring prosperity. You bring long life. To those who have a shrunk like this and keep it in your kitchen, you will always have food. It will bring, my friends, the barakat. To those who have it and place it on your altar, the entire home will be filled with that divine blessing. To those who place it in your rooms, it is said the home will always be filled with that love, with that harmony, with that respect. There will always be success. There will always be fulfillment. There will always be prosperity. To those who have a business, to those who have a shop, and you take one of this chunk and you keep it in your business, it is said the business will always remain successful. It will attract wealth. It will attract happiness. Let me hold on to it before somebody take it. Yes? <laughs> the importance of the right-sided chunk. Look for it, my dear friends. And when you look for it, as you would see, it is said, Lord Vishnu is telling to Lord Ganesha, the importance of this shank is so much that to those who simply have it, your life will turn around into success, joy, and happiness. The gurus of Gauraksha Samhita has told the world that to those who will simply keep the shank, Lakshmi Mata will always reside to bring wealth in the home and around us. Protection will always be there. And Lord Vishnu picked up the shank and he put his hands together. And he says, Ganesh Baba, now I will take your leave. And while the Lord walks down the Parvat of Kailash Parvat, he's about to now go to carry on with this wedding. He has invited Lord Ganesha. And while he's coming down for that beautiful, that grand wedding, scripture tells us, Baba Ganapati, he prepares himself. It is said, Lord Ganesha, he feels uncomfortable. And when he feels uncomfortable, he does not know what to do. Lord Vishnu walks up to him, seeing the discomfort that he has. And he puts his hands together. And he says, Prabhu, I realize that you're not feeling comfortable. And because you're feeling uneasy, Lord, I want to give you a very important task. Can you please stand at the front of the entire arena, the entire area? And can you just make sure that we are always protected? Lord Ganesh Baba, he stands up and he puts his hands together. And as he turns away, it is said like a child who is hurt. Like a child who does not know what to do because he has been turned down and he's been pushed away from the entire ceremony. He turns around and he thinks of his father. He thinks of the strength of Bhagwan Shankar. And in his mind, he's saying, if my father was here, he would stand up for me. Nama Shivaya Shivaya Nama Nama Shivaya And it is said one teardrop starts to roll down the eyes of Lord Ganesha because he has been pushed away from the ceremony. Everybody is there. Everybody they are planning, they are preparing, they are ready to celebrate. And he has seen the aura that he felt. He think of his father. When he thinks of his father, his father taught him something. Bhagwan Shiva is known to be the Lord of Peace. No matter what the world gives back, be a peaceful soul. It is your duty to be peaceful. It is our nature to be peaceful. As we said in the beginning, do not try to be what you are not. Our nature brings peace. And he remembered his father telling him one day, Bhagwan Shankar says, Gadapati Baba, no matter what the world will give to you, always keep your strength and always keep your armor strong. What armor do we speak about? You see, everybody have their aura. Always strengthen your aura so that when the world is ready to attack, you will not be disturbed. It is said according to our scripture, there are many types of auras and energy. There is what we call the, the satsang kavacha. Kavacha means protection. Many people have the aura of satsang kavacha. At the same time, many people have the aura of samsara kavacha. Protection of the sansar. Protection of the satsang. Sometimes, have you realized you speak to somebody and you make a joke? And when you make a joke, you didn't realize you hurt them while saying the joke because your intention was just to give them a joke. 
And after you finish the joke, they get up and they walk out and they say, hmm, not me and he again, no? Because they feel hurt. It is because the satsang kavacha, the energy, the aura of satsang has become weak. So a simple word will hurt you. Your aura is your protection. Your aura is like the armor of an individual who's about to fight a war. And if you're walking about in the world and your satsang kavacha is weak, when somebody make a joke, you might cry. As we say. It means to say that your samsar kavacha is what you have. Is what is strong. So the worldly things will get to you. Be strong mentally. Bhagwan taught Lord Ganesha, Gadapati, Beta, I will teach you today that you will go in the world and you will meet many types of people. Everybody is different in their own way. One individual might make a joke and you might laugh. Another might make a joke and you might cry. But be prepared because the world is made up of different people. Be prepared with what the world will give and to become strong, strengthen your kavacha. Strengthen your satsang kavacha. Sing. Build your energy. Build your aura. If your satsang kavacha, if your aura is strong, then you won't worry. How many people is worry here? Well, hari na some people could do so and they could do the so. <laughs> How many people is worry? Some people worry too much. According to one of the gurus of India, he says worrying is like sitting on a rocking chair. You become tired and you end up nowhere. You're just rocking right there. Gurudev has taught the world that worry only brings about sickness. Do you know half of the people of today, the they're becoming sick, disease, illness, cancer. All these negative things are coming because of worries and stress. Strengthen your satsang kavacha and protect yourself from the world. The emotional crisis of the world, the spiritual crisis of the world, become strong. And becoming strong means that you are keeping God close to you, keeping God in your heart, keeping God in your mind, keeping God in everything that you do, in your every thought, and you will become strong. Never allow petty things of the world to get to you, my friends. Know that God is in charge. Even if there's a situation and you may be worrying, He's in charge. He puts you in situations to humble you, not to tumble you. Not to turn you upside down and allow you to become messed up, but to humble you as an individual. When situa situations arise, Remember, God is making you more humble. Show it. Understand situations. Analyze them and rise above them. Transcend from them. Lord Ganesh Baba is walking out hurt, broken, depressed. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants him there. He's walking out. And then he remembers his father's words. And he raises his head. And he says, Om Namah Shivai. And he strengthens his kavacha. He strengthens his aura. And as he walks out, Ganapati Bappa! He's strong mentally. Becomes strong. According to Ramchandra Manas, Bhagwan Sri Ramachandra, he taught the world how to become strong. Lord Ganesha, he walks out of the wedding area and he goes at the front and he sits down. And while he's sitting down, one individual comes now to choke a little trouble. <laughs> Hari Narayana Narayana Hari Ganapati Baba. Hare kya hua? Why do you look so sad? Is it because they mistreated you? Well, I was walking amongst them and I heard they don't like that big belly. <laughs> How many men have a big belly? <laughs> there are Mishji Puliti, but. <laughs> Hare Baba, they're talking about your big belly. Hare Baba, they're scared if you walk into the wedding, you will eat out all the food. Hare Baba, they're looking at your long trunk and they're looking at how you are. Hare Prabhu. I wonder if they had a gym that time, Baba would have got gym. <laughs> Baba says, Naraji, I walk down Kailash Paravat all the time. And this is my size, I love to eat, Prabhu. And Narad Muni says, do not feel ashamed of who you are. 
Be proud of who you are. Because one day the world will turn to you. All of us who are here, people may not like us for many reasons. But be proud of who you are. People will try to break us down because they don't like something about us. Because they probably don't like our belly. I am one too. <laughs> but be proud of who you are because you are unique. Be proud of what you represent because we are the devotees of our Lord. We are bhaktas of our Lord. And when we show our strength by our confidence, it is said, Bhagwan blesses us. Lord Ganesha sits there and he says, Ganapati Bappa! Glory is in his name. If anybody has a problem with it, then you can leave. Narad Muni, if they decided that they will carry on with that wedding without me, then no problem, I will sit outside. And Narad Muni says, let us teach them a lesson. I am up for that. Let us teach them a lesson. What will we do, Naraji? Well, you see, Prabhu, you are the one who rides on the mushak, not so? You sit on the mouse, and while you're seated on the mouse, here's the plan. Allow your mouse to gather hundreds of mice and take them to the pathway in which that chariot will be passing, that procession, that grand procession. Allow them to go beneath the earth and let them shake up the whole spot. Allow them to loosen up the earth. And when the chariot is passing, I want that chariot to fall down. Let Bhagwan Vishnu fall down. Nobody will be able to take them out. And then let's see who they will call. Ganesh Baba smiles. Hare Naraji, kya baat? Bipati hamare tum netai Narayana karunamai sharanam Jai Lakshmi Pati Vishnu Sharanam Narayana Karunamai Sharanam Jai Lakshmi Pati Vishnu Sharanam Ganapati Bappa! Lord Ganesha sends all the mice and while they've shaken up the spot the procession is about to leave wedding is about to finish coming to the end of the wedding the final moment is about to now reach. Are, and Itasa starts. And while Itasa starts, they're about to exchange the beautiful mala. The entire ceremony has been completed. And Bhagwan Shri Vishnu, he then climbs onto his chariot and he's about to leave with his consort. And while they're leaving, it is said, while all the elephants, all the horses, all the chariots are passing on that pathway, the pathway is weak. Because all the mice have shaken up the dirt and the earth. As soon as the Lord's chariot then touches onto that earth in front of the entire arena, it is said suddenly one of his wheels becomes stuck in the earth. He comes out and he tries to pull it out, but he can't pull it out. He calls on a few of the gods who are there and the gods are trying their best. Nobody could pull it out. One sadhu was passing by and the sadhu sees the situation. And he walks up to Prabhu. Prabhu, do you want me to help you? Prabhu looks at him and he smiles. You could help me. All these gods trying to pull it out. You could help me, Sadhu. All the gods are looking at this Sadhu now. And they want to laugh. Imagine we are gods and we can't pull it out. But he wants to pull it out. When we see people in trouble, what do we do? Do we laugh at them or do we help them? There are many people who are happy when people see problems. They look at you in your eyes, I'm really happy for you. <laughs> you should fall down. Many people seem to be happy for us, but in reality, many people will fake it in the world. And while this sadhu walks up, he sees that wheels stuck on the earth he goes up and he says let me take a try and he rubs his hand and what does he say jai ganesh and he makes a lift and with one pull the wheel comes out nobody could understand they don't cover their mouth Hare, we are gods and we couldn't pull it out he just said jai ganesh Hare, sadhu come why did you say jai ganesh 
and he looked at them and he said, don't you know that Lord Ganesha is the remover of obstacles? You are the gods, don't you know that if you're about to begin a journey, you must invite him first? Don't you know if he's not there to begin that journey, you will end up in problems? And even while in the midst of it, you are in problems, don't you know if you call his name, he is a remover of problems? All you had to do was invite him. But what did you do? You ran him. Lord Vishnu, he felt what had taken place. And feeling hurt, he said he decides to go back to Lord Ganapati. Lord Ganesh sits there and he's waiting. He's playing as though he doesn't know anything and he's waiting and suddenly he hears the footsteps of Bhagwan Shri Vishnu coming now. He wants to laugh because he wants to say, I showed you well. But at the same time, he waits for that moment. And while Lord Vishnu walks up to him, hands together, Lord Vishnu says, Prabhu, maaf ki je. How many people have the strength to turn to someone and say, I am sorry? Not many people.